Howdy! My name is Leanne Hale and I own the Purple Turtle Art Studio. It is an amazing place where children and adults come to learn about art because art is for everyone. And I can't have my studio open right now for people to come in so I thought I would come to you. That's pretty awesome. And um, since I don't have kids coming in, I don't have tuition coming in, so if you like what you see today and the rest of the week, feel free to leave me a tip. And if this is not a good time for you to do that, don't worry about it, just enjoy. I'm gonna be here all week, every day, three o'clock Central Time on my Facebook page, Purple Turtle Art Studio. So, this segment's called Make and Play. It's a two part. What we're gonna do today is we are going to make castles, fantasy castles. And we're gonna make them using shapes because everything that we see is made out of shapes. It's pretty amazing. And we can break down what we see into shapes and we can draw anything we want. Just like, uh, just like we know how to write, writing is drawing. At one point you didn't know how to write and some of you still may be learning how to write. So hang in there. And if you can draw right now with these little hands, you'll learn how to write even better. So we're gonna take the shapes and we're gonna create fantasy castles. Ooh, it's gonna be so fun. So let's get started. We don't always have to be able to draw everything on our own. We have lots of tools and things around us and sometimes tools don't even look like tools. Like this box. I bought something in this box. I don't know what it was, but I saved it. So we're gonna use this for part of our castle today. And we're gonna take all of our shapes and we're gonna compose them into something new. We're gonna make our very own composition because that's what happens when we take items and we rearrange them and we make them something new. We're gonna take the elements of art, that's what we're gonna take, and we're gonna take the, the element of shape and we're gonna combine it to make something new. So I'm gonna start with the middle of my castle and I'm drawing upside down, okay? So don't put yours at the top. We're going backwards so you can see what I'm doing. I would like for you to use a pencil and you might wanna have an eraser handy. And we're gonna have a few other tools. Let me go ahead and do that. Uh, if you have a straight edge, a straight edge can be a ruler. A straight edge can be just something straight. Here's a piece of mat board that I cut. It's just a scrap. This can also be a straight edge. See how it's straight? Straight edge. All right. Um, other shapes that we can use, we can use triangles. Here's some blocks, look at that, it's a tinker doy. How about a roll of tape? That's a nice, what shape is this? It's a circle, it's awesome. We get two different size circles here. So um, we're gonna, these are the, the, the tools that we're gonna start off with and then we're gonna add some more tools. I'm not gonna draw with a pencil because you won't be able to see it. So I'm gonna use a Sharpie. But you guys, stick with your pencils, okay? That way, if you make a mistake, it's really easy to fix it. You can just erase it. You also wanna draw like an artist, and when an artist is starting something new, we always draw lightly so that it's easier to erase. All right, so I'm gonna set this down on the edge here. Remember, this is the bottom of my paper because I am drawing upside down. So look at this. I'm just gonna go around the edges, and I'm going to trace this shape. Do you know what shape this is? It's a rectangle. Some of you older students and older artists out there, I'm asking these questions for our younger artists, but this is for every age. My husband sat down and did this with me the other day and my 15 year old daughter and my 12 year old son. And we all sat at the dinner table and we enjoyed making castles together. So it's for any age. All right, so here's the middle of my castle. We're gonna, we're gonna work on something that's called symmetry today. Symmetry means the same on both sides. So if I take my hands and I do this, this is symmetrical. It means when you fold something in half and it touches, it's the same, like a butterfly, all right? So here's the middle. That means that this half and this half is gonna match. So every good castle has to have a few towers. So I'm gonna go ahead and put towers in. Remember, I'm drawing upside down. This is the top and this is the bottom. So I'm just gonna take this piece that I've cut out and I'm gonna use this for my tower. Remember, you can use whatever you want. You don't even have to use these tools. You can just draw this freehand. I like using tools because I like to teach people how to look around them and see what they can use. That's just right here, you know, all around us, like a roll of tape or uh, a box. 
the bottom of a cup, a Tinker Toy, a Lego, all those things we can reuse. So here's my two towers. And look, I've got the same. If I folded this in half, would it touch? Yes. Will it be perfect? No. No, it won't. All right, so I think I need a door. And I want to have a round door. I like how that will be different from all of these very square edges. So I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to go halfway. There we go. I like that. Look at there. So look here. This is what we do. I'm going to put this down to make this edge. Some of you guys that have smaller hands, you might have to get somebody with bigger hands to help you hold things down. It's really, really good practice for you to learn how to put that pencil on that edge and just slide it down. I can tell that this line here is parallel to this line. That means they can go on forever and never cross because I'm looking to make sure that this space and this space is the same. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, okay? We are not perfect. These little things like that where it doesn't quite line up, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. So now I'm gonna go ahead and make an opening for my door. I'm gonna try to find the middle here. Let's see, it looks like it's about right here. There, there's a little dot. That little dot helps keep me, keep me straight here. I need lots of little dots in my life. All right, so now let's see, what do you think we need? How about the top of our tower? Let's see. Now this triangle seems to fit perfectly right there. I didn't even plan that, believe it or not, but we don't have to use that. I could make my own triangle. This is a Triscuit box that I cut. I could put that there, or I could just draw it by hand. If I want to draw it by hand, look how I can make it where the middle of it is in the middle. I'll just go up from the middle, put a dot, and then I'm going to go down. And I'm going to make it a little bit curved. I like that look. All right, I'm going to do it over here too. A dot. If I am going too fast for you, push pause and come back to me, okay? Just push pause. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is, hmm, all good castles need to be fortified, right? So nobody can get in unless they're welcomed in. What if there's some kind of mean dragons in the area? We don't wanna just invite them in, that would be horrible. I'm gonna put my straight edge here and I'm gonna just continue this line across. Here we go, one. We need to make sure it happens over here too because we're being symmetrical. Can you say symmetrical? Yeah, yeah. So, try to fit that in a couple times today. Symmetrical. All right, I think that we need to have some battlements. You know what those are? Those little things at the top that the archers can shoot through. Let me see, I have a block here. Another thing you can use is a Lego, a Lego brick. I don't think I have a little Lego brick but I have some of these Legos. You can just look around you. Once you start working with shapes, you will see all sorts of possibilities everywhere you go as far as shapes are concerned. So I'm gonna take this and let's see, I'm gonna give myself a little line there where I know how to line it up the next time. And I'm going to draw around it. Remember, you're using a pencil so that you don't leave marks that somebody might not like on your blocks or your Legos, or whatever you're using. All right, I'm gonna start this in the middle. That's how you get to be symmetrical. I'm gonna put this in the middle, and then I'm gonna do both sides out. If I started this side and I worked my way across, I might run out of space. So I'm just gonna start in the middle, and I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna put these battlements, and look, that's not perfect there. It's okay, I can go back. Nobody's gonna notice those little imperfections when I start adding all of the fun details. We're starting our composition, our, com our combination of shapes into making something new. We're starting that composition with our shapes, and then we're gonna add to that to make something truly amazing, truly amazing. And we will do that by the next step. And I will tell you in a minute what that is. Oh, look at there. See how little an archer could get between there and pew, pew, shoot the arrows. That sounds more like a lightsaber or a gun in Star Wars. All right, here we go. And look, I didn't get that perfect. I'm over to the side a little bit, but that's okay. It's not perfectly symmetrical. Uh-oh. That's all right. 
Okay, so we have our battlements. I think we need, um, we need some windows in the towers. Yeah, we need some windows. So a good way to put the windows, and I wanna, I'm gonna make rounded windows because I'm going to repeat this shape, this element in some other places to make a cohesive, cohesion, cohesion means to stick together, a cohesive, um, a cohesive picture here, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottoms of the windows. I could use the edge of my block if I wanted to, look at that. Or you could just draw it freehand, all right? It's up to you. But I have this in my hand, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. And this one's over here. There we go. Awesome, all right. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do my arched windows. I'm gonna do the sides, and then I'm gonna curve the top. Look, they're not perfect at all. They're a little wonky. I like that word, wonky. There we go. And there we go. There we go. All right. So now I have all my main parts in this castle. This is where you get to go and have all sorts of fun. When you're making your castle, you might have followed me step by step here today, but you could do this again and you can change it up. That's what we do when we learn something new. We learn, we follow, and then we get to have all these beautiful ideas that are our own. If you don't like your castle right now, it's probably because it's not finished, all right? Sometimes things just aren't finished yet and they're not their best until they're finished. And sometimes things take a long time to finish. All right, so uh, what we can do with this now is we can add our details. Details can be other objects. It could be adding pattern or texture. I think I would like to add some bricks to this. So I'm gonna use my block here, but you can just do it by hand too. I could use my block and I can add bricks. Look at this. And I'm not gonna add them ever, everywhere. I'm just gonna add them some places because the viewer, the person who looks at this, their eyes will, and their brains will just kind of fill in those missing bricks. It'll give our viewer a chance to use their imagination, which is always beautiful when it comes to art, is to leave a little bit for the viewer's mind, the person that gets to enjoy your art, for them to think about what they see and make up their own decisions about how they feel about your art and where they think it's going and what else is happening. You kind of create your own stories. All right, so you see how I've added some of those? I could also add some door handles. Now you could have a door that comes down like a drawbridge, or you could have a big double door like this. You can have all sorts of doors. I think we need some, um, we need some flags. I don't have room for them to come off of these towers, so I think I'm gonna put one right here. I'm gonna use a straight edge. You can use any kind of straight edge, like I said before. I'm just gonna use, I'm gonna use this straight edge and I'm gonna have a couple flags. Now let me show you something really cool about making flags look like they're waving in the wind. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this little half of a circle. I'm gonna do two flags here. I'm gonna do this one and then I'm gonna do another one. Here's the top of the flag. Look at that. This little gap here is where it's pulling away from the pole. And then, the bottom of the flag, look at that. I love those flags, I really do. So now I'm gonna do a square flag. You could decide like what your kingdom or your village or your country, like what kind of flag do they have? So here is my kind of traditional flag, but I don't want it to be straight at the end because I think that's just kind of boring to me. I wanna make mine pointed. And then you can decorate this however you want, okay? Um, let's see, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a paintbrush on mine. That's excellent. And then over here, maybe these are splotches of color. Hmm, maybe this is an art castle. Looks like it's turning out that way. So then I could go ahead and I can add all sorts of things to this castle to make it special, to make it mine, to make it interesting, and to make it fun. So I'm gonna show you a castle that I've been working on. Once you've finished with all of your pencil lines, it's really nice to come back if you want a very illustrated look with a pen. 
You could use a Sharpie, you could use a Micron, you could use a Bic Flare. I love Bic Flare pens. Let me show you some of these other castles that we've been working on. Here is a castle that my son, who is 12, William, he made. And um, one of the interesting things that he added, he has a sign that says that the swimming pool's this way and the basketball court's that way, because this is very important to him. And then there's a pole that you can slide down to get out faster to go to the swimming pool or the basketball court. All right. And here is one that my husband made. He is a very, uh, he's, He's very uptight about his drawings, so the everything is super perfect. He hasn't colored his yet. He hasn't inked it in either, so um, he has a lot of work left to do. You can see there's one back here that this might look more like some of the castles that maybe some of our younger artists do. They're going to be a little less detailed, but the really cool thing about art is, is I could teach something or show you something that everyone can do, whether you're just learning how to hold a pencil or you've been doing it for quite some time. Maybe you're retired and you're looking for something awesome to do. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I have some retired ladies that come up here and meet with me and we have a great time doing art. Okay, so here's one I've been working on and I've had a fantastic job time working on this one. It is not it has not felt like a job at all. It has felt wonderful. I've loved it. So uh, it's almost like an adult coloring book is what my daughter said I've created here. So here is my castle. You can probably guess what the theme is. It's a garden theme, a flower theme. The, the, fun, the fun part for me is adding all the lines and the pattern and the little surprises and the color. The color's great. So you can add surprises like this. Look here. I don't know if you can see. There's a little tiny snail right there. There's a little butterfly right here. And then I have my flags waving. I've added some other textures in here, like the scalloped edge on the, the tops of the towers. These windows I made into flowers. My door here has a huge key. I'm gonna make a key that's gonna go in here. And I think that the end of the key is gonna be a flower with some, with some um, ribbons that come off. So if you wanna put a key on yours, we can do that. We're gonna add more to this as the week goes on. This is gonna be a project that we continue. And then we're gonna play with it because that's the best to make your own toys. All right? I called it Schloss Hale since my last name is Hale and Schloss is castle in German. My neighbors are German, so we know all kinds of cool German words. And, um, and then I have the flowers on the top. So, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna, once you, once you finish drawing it and you get all your cool little details in here, you're gonna go ahead if you want to. You can add ink to it like I did with the black line. You don't have to. You can add words to yours. Yours could be a fire castle, a drag, maybe a dragon lives in it, a nice, a nice dragon. A dragon lives in it. And, um, or maybe it's a sports castle or maybe it's a candy castle. It can be anything you want, a unicorn castle. Somebody really needs to make a unicorn corn castle for me. Um, I thought I was gonna put patterns on all of the bricks and then I decided not to. So I have this one brick that I'm gonna put cool pattern right here. And I might even end up cutting this out so I can have a princess or something like that come out here, all right? So I'm just gonna take Prismacolors. These are my favorite, these are my favorite tools. My favorite medium for coloring, that's what we call our art supplies, what we're working in. So I like Prismacolors and this is a set of Prismacolors. So if somebody's looking to get something new to add to your art products at home, this is a great investment. You can always also use crayons and markers, watercolor, anything you have at home. Or maybe you're just into pencil drawing, it's fine too. So I'm gonna be continuing this by adding more color. And it's lots of fun working with the color because uh, with the Prisma colors, you can blend. You can see here how I've added different colors to these roses. Do you see these roses? They're just little swirly, little swirly lines, right? All of this, when we put it all together, looks impressive. But if you look at each little area, it's a triangle. They're just shapes. It's real easy. So I'm going to be spending some time coloring this. And you will see the rest of this. When we get back, you will see the rest of this, and then um, we will add on to it. So, 
In just a second, I'm gonna take you to the next part of today, which is the play part, all right? So, I'm gonna continue coloring. You continue working on your castle, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna put these together, okay? Thanks for joining me, and keep creating. So here we are at the play part, which is so much fun. I love the play part. When I was little, I used to make houses for my Barbie dolls with shoe boxes and all sorts of things. Um, I never really, I never played with them as much as I made them. I made and made and made and made and made, and my sister played and played and played and played and played. So here we go with the play part where you can set everything up. So this is not a castle, this is a cathedral. My 15 year old daughter, Grayton, she made this. And you see how she's she's made the door where it opens. Look at that. Hello, welcome friends. See that? And the way it's standing up, it needs to be it needs to be glued on here better. But I don't want to do that yet because she hasn't colored it and she wants to finish. But we were trying to get these videos together soon so that my friends at home would have something fun to do and I would be able to see you. Okay. So if you turn this around, you can. Notice that this is just a Triscuit box. We like Triscuits at our house. <laughs> so um, I just put it on the Triscuit box. It can go on anything that you have. Also, when you're looking for supplies to draw on and to, to make things out of, you could, to put to make this, this uh, cathedral or your castle or your shire or whatever we're gonna add, you could use the inside of a box. So whoever is responsible for your trash and your recycling, ask them to open the box up and flip it backwards, you could turn that box inside out and go ahead and make your uh, your buildings, your trees, your cars, whatever you're gonna make, directly on that box and just put it back together. It's amazing. It's a really good way to use some awesome supplies that normally get thrown away or put in recycling. We can go ahead and recycle them. All right, so look, my doors are open. Here we go. I've used some blocks. I love blocks to this day. I love blocks, I love building. And then we can we can invite some friends to join us. There they come. <laughs> the Sesame Street <laughs> Sanitation Department. <laughs> Look at that. There they go. I wonder why Big Bird's in the back though. It seems like there should be a trash can back there, but there's not. So this is Lucky and Big Bird. Beep, 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 beep. I hear that every morning when the trash comes to pick up across the street from my house at the school. The beeping. Here goes Lucky. Lucky is gonna go inside. He's gonna go into the cathedral. He's very thankful for so many things. He's gonna go say thank you. And they don't let birds in the cathedral. <laughs> so Big Bird, <laughs> Big Bird has to stay in the trash truck. Okay, so here's some other things. So we can take our castle, and I can take this castle and I'm gonna cut it out and I'm gonna put it on a couple of boxes. And I might even add boxes in the back that have um, bigger towers on it. I'm also going to create some village, little village houses um, and, and some other surprises for us to add. And by the time we get done, hopefully your fantasy land that we've created will have taken over the dining room or the living room and your parents will be so excited about that. They actually will because you're gonna have so much fun and you can get them to join you and we can all just uh, just have have a good have a good time creating right now. This is a good time for us to really think creatively. So let's go back and think about a few things that we learned today. Shapes make everything that we see. It's amazing. You can look at it and you're like, oh my goodness, look at that that fan. It's a circle. Fans also radial symmetry. You can look that up. Have somebody help you. Uh, symmetry like a butterfly. When we close, fold it in half. The sides touch right? Composition, when we take different elements, different items, and put them together to make something new. All of those words uh, are used in different, in different uh, areas of study, too. So they're good for us to learn. When we learn the vocabulary of a certain subject, we are able to talk to each other uh, more thoroughly and understand like a new language. So those are some art words that we use. And we're going to continue with our awesome fantasy world and 
learning about art and just having a really good time. I'm gonna try to find a way, I think that you could just post pictures of what you do on my Facebook page and we'll figure all that out. And I look forward to seeing them and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks for coming.